begin. So this is uh, Art of Meditation class. Um, we're going to go over a lot of things, uh, a lot of different meditation practices, uh, many different styles, traditions. Um, the idea is to expose you to all different types of practices. Um, some you may resonate with, others may not do much for you. Ultimately, my hope is that you try many and see what works good for you and adapt a custom one that works for you. I do feel with meditation, uh, there's this period where that we study it and we learn many different techniques, but ultimately we make a, a style that works for our own. And if we're knowledgeable men about many different techniques, um, then when we're with our patients, um, you know, depending on their health needs, we can try to offer them many different things to help them on this journey of getting healthier. Um, and one thing in your arsenal may be uh, offering a meditation practice. They may say to you, oh, you know, this is great. I, I, I've just got so much stretch in my life. I'd love to learn meditation. Like, where do I start, you know? So it's nice to have some thoughts on it, you know, or some experience with it. Um, and if you know many different styles, then you can say, well, you know, this one probably would work for this person. Or I see this person's kind of struggling with some lung issues, you know, their chief concern is like breathing issues or asthma or allergies. Maybe I'll, I'll have them, you know, I'll print out you know, the lung channel. I'll show them where it is and I'll teach them a breathing technique just to focus on moving the energy through that channel. You know, just some things like that. So we'll go over all so many styles, Indian, Native American, American. Hey, welcome. No, we have a, a, a cushion just for you. Um, uh, what else will we do? What other styles? Vipassana, we'll do a walking practice, a, a practice out in nature. We'll do some Chinese, uh, like Taoist meditation practices. We'll meditate on the five, or some people would say the six yin organs. So, oh yeah, good. So, uh, that's where we start. Again, my name is Dr. Brennan Arm. Um, I graduated from this program about 12 years ago, uh, yeah, 2004. Uh, I went to practice, and then I did the doctoral program, which I completed in 08. I was in the third cohort. Um, I opened a clinic about 10 years ago with my wife. It was called Lotus East West Medical Center. And we just have been growing it and growing it. Um, it was just a couple blocks from here, and then we just moved it a year and a half ago to a warmer block over. And it's a, a whole holistic primary care center. There's 20 practitioners, 22 practitioners, something like that. It's like 14 or 15 different modalities, so it's not just acupuncture. Um, so that's a big passion, you know, that I have is, is to, you know, create some uh, more consciousness for people uh, or a place for people to go if they're not feeling well that has a holistic, um, you know, mission to it. So that's about me. I've been teaching this course here for, I was telling these guys for, this is my 44th quarter. I took last quarter off, which was great. It's my 44th. And um, here we go. So we definitely ask any questions as we go through, okay? But um, let me start by just going over the syllabus, just so we can get a, an idea of what we're going to do, okay? So uh, course description. Students will study the fundamental philosophy, form, and practice of meditation. So each experiential class, and that's an important word, experiential, really wants you to just get a taste of it and feel it. So we're going to be doing some meditation every time. Will primarily, consi primarily consist of guided or silent meditation practice, but will also include class discuss discussion and lecture, uh, covering the basic principles of posture, breathing, attention, concentration, and awareness, the intention of this course is to empower and inspire TCM students, traditional Chinese medicine students, to continue a lifelong, rewarding relationship with just sitting. Um, I even heard this, you know, said, sometimes people say, well, you know, I don't necessarily want to uh, teach people meditation, because some people they say, oh, too religious, or I don't do meditation, or, you know, I, my mind is too, you know, um, too much monkey mind. It, too anxious, too restless thoughts, you know, mental restlessness. I, it's not for me. You know, 
two comments on that. One is uh, sometimes we say, okay, well, we're not necessarily teaching meditation, we're teaching breathing. You know, so uh, it, you know, we could all use you know, some time in our day to practice conscious breathing. Um, you know, we never had perhaps a course growing up where if you were in a conflict, you were taught how to breathe. Um, you know, we're often taught breathing, you know, if you do like a Lamaze class, but that may be one of the only times you're actually learning how to do conscious breathing and how helpful it might have been when we're growing up to learn when you're under stress or in conflict, which we all go through, just breathing techniques. So that's point one. Um, the other point I forgot. So <laughs> there you go. It's, yeah, so it's already on my mind. Um, anyways, uh, for those who are willing, the promise of this course, promise is a tricky word, and this art form is a cultivation of, of mind and heart. What do I mean by that? Um, you'll see, and we'll go over this, there are certain things we want to do with the meditation practice to open our heart, um, spend more of our energy in our heart as opposed to more of our energy fueling thoughts, mental restlessness, um, desires, aversions, you know, delusional thoughts. You know, we spend so much time in the mind. If we can just take a little bit of that fraction and make the mind more peaceful and quiet, and, and, and let some of that energy come back to our heart, and we'll go over 10 different practices to do that, um, we might be happier people. Uh, it is by a uh, way of such cultivation that a doctor may become what the ancients termed a, a superior physician. So that being said, there is a required textbook. Um, I find it. This one. I love this book. It's a favorite. Thich Nhat Hanh is a Vietnamese monk. Uh, he lives in exile in southern France, in Plum Village. Um, uh, he also has a base here in the United States, in Escondido, which is about two hours south, called Deer Park Monastery. Highly recommend when this guy comes into town. And now he's an older, he's probably in his 80s, so you know he's a good one. Um, if he comes into town and does like a day-long talk or two-hour talk, check him out. You know, I would really recommend it. We live in LA, so a lot of things come here, which is great. Uh, so go see him. Um, or if you're looking for an adventure for the weekend, drive down to Escondido and go to his monastery and do some practice there. Anyways, the book is called Pieces Every Step. It's always been our course, only course requirement. You can buy it in the bookstore. You can buy it um, online. You can buy it used from Amazon for probably like 80 cents, you know, reuse, recycle. Um, it's a beautiful book. He's written, I don't know, 50, 100 books, this guy. They're all the same. It, it's all different practices. His mission is mindfulness, so whatever you're doing, uh, be fully present. You know, if you're eating a tangerine, really be with it. If you're cleaning a teacup, uh, just be present with that. If you're driving on the street and you see a red light, smile, you know? Like, bring happiness and joy to the present moment. So mindfulness practice, being mindful this moment. Anyways, amazing teacher, uh, you know, was nominated by Do Dr. Martin Luther King for a Nobel Peace Prize. You know, he's been around a long time, so. Enjoy this one. Any questions so far? So, I also put in a syllabus, and you guys got a chance to get the syllabus uh, online. Yeah, um, some more recommended texts. You know, you you can check them out if you're interested. They're different, uh, obviously, books on meditation, uh, cultivation of the mind, opening of the heart, um, by some you know uh, famous teachers that you you probably know some of their names. Um, a Path with Heart by Jack Kornfield, Zen Mind, Beginner Mind by Shunyu Suzuki, What the Buddha Taught by Wapula Rahula. Uh, there's about another uh, five, six other ones on there too. Um, how is this course broken up? How do you get your grade? Um, essentially, uh, we're going to all each morning meditate at home. That's your homework. You know, and, it's, and I do it. Every morning when I get up, 
Um, I even sit at the side of my bed. I don't even, I'm not even, I don't even sit in a cushion anymore right now. I just sit at the side of the bed, feet on the ground, I don't cross the legs, I just sit and I do some meditation practice. You know, sometimes five, 10 minutes, sometimes 20, 30 minutes, depending on what's happening. But I always do it first thing in the morning, and that's what I recommend. Once the day starts going, it's gonna be very tricky. Midday, the mind is just too active. The, the yang energy of the sun is just too, too much. Evening time sounds great if you're inspired by it, but many of us, you know, we get a little sleepy, so we just kind of meditate, we just, or we're laying down, and just, you know, you just fall asleep. So uh, try both, see what works for you. But a 10, 15 minute practice each morning would be great. And after each practice, I'd recommend, this is also part of the course, and we'll turn these in at the end, um, have a little book, you know, and you can jot down some of your thoughts. Or, or not even some of your thoughts. Better yet, how about just some of your observations? Like, what did you witness? What did you see when you are practicing? Today I noticed, I'm really slouching here. Like, what's up with that? So, what I did was try to go like this, and I felt like this energy here sort of open up. And then, I, and then it wasn't, my rib cage was kind of pressing on my lungs so much. I could just, my shoulders full the back. I could breathe a little easier. I noticed that. Or, you know what, I noticed today, gosh, my mind was really struggling with something in the past. You know, this conversation I had with someone two days back, it just kept coming in, you know, and just kept coming into my practice. Or today, you know what, it was very still, you know, almost like I wasn't even breathing. I was just, the mind was very still, you know. I, I, I felt myself kind of tap into this observation, witness mind, where, you know, maybe I heard like a bird fly past and it came and went. Um, so jot down some thoughts, some, some uh, just observations. Don't jot down the thoughts, so welcome, so how do you, there, there, whatever works for you. He seems to generously offered up a cushion. Thank you so much. Um, oh, let me, let's give this to that. Okay. Can't wait to go over that one. The if you get any, you know, there's two things if you get anything out of this course, I'll try to really make that one in bold red, okay? So like if you get anything out of this course, it would be dedicating your practice and going over this one, but we'll, we'll get there. So uh, does that make sense? Like don't shot down, oh, I remembered I needed more like, uh, you know, quinoa rice milk. Oh yeah, I always forget that. Oh yeah, we're really getting like low on like. Try to let that one go. You know, you just let it go. Some even say, when you're meditating, you let it all go. Even when you're practicing, say, you know, get this vision of this, oh, the, the Dalai Lama, you know, or, or whoever it is, 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 is coming to me and is giving me this special message. And then, then, what is he saying? Even that you say, I'm letting go. Just stillness. And that's, that's what we try to practice. Um, and you'll see, as you practice that day after day, then you'll find throughout the rest of your day, each day, the mind, you know, has a little more relationship with that stillness, you know? And then sometimes you get challenged. Something comes up that makes you very, very excited, or something comes up that makes you very, very upset, you know? And all of a sudden you really identify with, oh, that was just a terrible thing that happened. But then, you know, we all have that happen from time to time. So maybe you can try to practice, you know, this concept of equanimity where maybe, you know, I can, I'm not going to dissociate or become numb, but maybe instead of identifying so closely with this, you know, this too shall pass. You know, maybe I can just watch it a little bit instead of identifying so closely with it. Sometimes practitioners talk about is our consciousness is a blue sky. And white clouds are different shapes, different colors, different speeds coming through the cloud, you know, the, 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 the blue sky. But there are thoughts or emotions, and they pass, and they all do. And sometimes it's a clear day, sometimes a cloudy day. But they keep changing. So that's part of the homework, is the, medita is the meditation each morning and journaling. At the end, we'll turn them in. 
promise you I won't read them. I'll be like right here with you guys. I'll be like, oh, that's wonderful. You know, <laughs> it's just I'm just looking for compliance, not content. You know, so if you want to be very personal, we're not going to share it. Yeah. Do you want us to cut down seven days a week? Um, I would meditate yeah. seven days a week. Yep, every day of the week. Okay. And since we're on that subject, I, just, I had a patient that we were discussing this yesterday. Here's another Chinese medicine theory. Well, this is, this is the first Chinese medicine theory. I'm going to try to bring some Chinese medicine concepts into this class. And I'm also going to try to bring, especially for you guys, some practice management concepts into this class because you got to get a lot of that. You're going to need it. That's good. As much as you can for as many teachers as is gold. Um, seven days a week. And the patient yesterday said, yeah, you know, but God, i got a really stressful job. And, you know, my boss can call me at 1 in the morning you know, and tell me something on a Saturday night, and I got to be ready for a meeting at, you know, 6 a.m. on Sunday morning, you know, and I may be out with a friend having a drink, and I'm taking this call all of a sudden. So can I sleep in, you know, during the weekend? Because I work so hard during the week. Chinese medicine says no. Seven days a week. Rhythms, you know. There's a rhythm to you go to sleep the same time each night, get up same time in the morning. I mean, of course, variations happen, but that general rhythm, uh, is, is best for health. Have the same large meal for breakfast, moderate lunch, light dinner, you know? Same meditation in the morning, same time, every day. It's, I don't know. It's, from my experience, that, that's a Chinese medicine concept. It's one of the secrets to living to 140, and we'll go over some other ones. So also, 30% uh, is uh, participation in daily discussion. So my lecture is fine. There's some good stuff in it. But this, you know, what we all talk about is the juice. That's the good stuff. So please chime in. Let's have discussion. Uh, your uh, good news, your online price says uh, two papers are due for this course. Um, only one's due. Mm -hmm. So... This is the anti-stress, de-stress class. You know, this is in the class is not supposed to be stressful. Meditation is to help relieve the nervous system, you know, calm the nervous system, regulate the liver chi, not cause more, more trouble. In fact, I'll, I'll bring it up now. One of the two, one of the few things that I really want to get across is I, I once went on a uh, like a, I like to do sometimes day-long meditation retreats, or I've done some week-long and 10-day ones. And this one in Marin County, there's a, a center called um, Spirit Rock uh, Meditation Center. It's in Marin County, and uh, it's a great center um, just north of San Francisco. Um, and there was a teacher, one of the founders, is, uh, is called Jack Hornfield. He's a pretty famous Western Westerner who's a psychologist, uh, was an ordained monk, is a meditation teacher. And it was a day long, and, and at the end, people got a chance to do question and answer. People asked some tricky questions, you know, like some very challenging life experiences. And then I remember, I don't even remember those questions, but I remember someone asked such a basic, like, 101 question. They said, like, you know, how do I know my meditation practice is working? You know, or how do I know this is, like, a good practice for me? I was like, wow, that's, a, that's actually a good question. You know, because don't know, I asked myself that same question. And he made the point, and his answer was simply, he said, you know, if the practice helps to open your heart and quiet your mind, still your mind, then this is a good practice for you. If it makes the mind, you know, the monkey mind go more, which takes away from your energy being in your heart, then this is not a good practice for you. That's it. That being said, this is the de-stress class. So hopefully there'll be less in the mind, more available for the heart. Uh, what will you write your paper on? We'll go over this some more. But I would recommend a one sheet, you know, a one page, something that you would give to a future patient of yours. They come in your clinic, you're seeking your care, they're not feeling well, either physically or mentally or spiritually or a combination of both or all three. And, they say, and you say, you know, you should, Mrs. Jones, you should really start a meditation practice. I think that would be very helpful. Oh, you know, I've always wanted to practice. W do you have any recommendations of where I should go or, 
or what, what, what site I should look to, or what book I should buy, or do you have any starting point? And you say, well, that's funny, I actually do. And then you hand them that. You hand them what you wrote in this class. Help somebody else in their practice. And that's going to live on way longer than this 10-week course. So that's, that's what I'd like it to be. Something that you can, you know, based on what you learn in this class. Or nothing about this class, just something from your own experience in meditation. So that plus the uh, turning in the journals is really your deliverables, plus punctual attendance. Um, on that note, think about this one. We can talk about some later. I don't mind doing 10 to noon. I've always done 10 to noon. Uh, if you wanted to do 11, uh, 9 to 11 instead, doesn't work out? No. Perfect. 10 to Sorry. noon. No, that's, that's exactly what we needed to know. Okay. Yeah. Because if there's one person it doesn't work out with, then 10 to noon works great for me. It's fine. But I just wanted to see where you guys were at. So we don't need to think about it. We know it. <laughs> uh, the grading scale is uh, A through F. Um, if you're more than um, 15 minutes late, uh, we mark you tardy. No. Or is that absence? That's tardy? tardy. I don't know why. I don't know. Oh, now I have If there's three tardies, it's one absence. It's 15 minutes late? Two tardies, I think, is what. Now I got to go check that one. I believe more than 15 minutes. I think it's two. Is. Two would be an absence. I know, boy, Let I just. Know when you find out. When I find <laughs> out, boy, it, one quarter, I forgot it all. Good grief. I'm not sure if it's more than 15 minutes is considered an absence oh. and more than late is a tardy or more than 15 minutes is a tardy. I'm not sure, but I know more two tardies equals an absence and more than two absences is a half a failure. Yeah. It's, just, it's just between you and administration. So, sorry. It took me years to be able to, you know, be comfortable with that one. But you should see my daughters in kindergarten. Oh, they're tough. <laughs> oh, yeah. You get a note home every single time, even if you're late. Mm -hmm. You know, like, oh, I know I got out late. It's tough getting out this morning. <laughs> Anyways, uh, let's start. Any questions before, and then we start? Uh huh. Students who arrive more than 15 minutes late to class or leave class before it ends will be given. Uh, half absence towards attendance. So yeah, that'd be tardy. And the two tardies would be one absence, and two more than two absences would be removed from course. Anyways, uh, that's the syllabus. Um, I want to go over uh, something called the ten paramitas. And then we'll get into this. Um, let me go to the board. And then we're going to do a meditation on this. Let's start at sleep. Um, the practice is about opening your heart. Here, here, here we're sitting. You know, meditation student. This energy is what we want to open. You know? This one, open your heart. This energy, the mental restlessness, that needs to get easier, less, calmer. It doesn't mean you're not intelligent. In fact, as if anything, it means you're more diamond focused. You know, better concentration, better memory. You just don't have this brooding, restless mind, um, that kind of energy. So there's 10 different practices we can try, we can practice, called, they're called the 10 paramitas. Paramitas, or ten uh, perfections of the heart. Ten different practices we can do to open our heart. And if we only have a finite amount of energy in our body, if more energy is going here, then there's less for here. Next time we'll go over something called the five kleshas, which are the five mental obscurations. So there are five different things that will make this be more. And if there's more of this, then there's less of that. So if you're 70, 30, if you can go 60, 40, 50, 50, you're doing great. So I'll do my best to remember all 10.
There was a period of time I wrote down all 10 and would look at them all 10 every day and I would try to concentrate on them. And then I realized it's a little too fast. The day is too short to go over 10. So then I said, well, let's try maybe one a day and we'll rotate it. So you could try that. And then I said, that's still too quick. And then I did one a week, one a month, and now I'm trying one a year. If I can just get one a little better a year, that's good. So I'm, there's no order, but they're just the ones that come to mind. Patience. So many things I want to tell you guys. You just got to rein it in. Patience. Wisdom. Energy. Truthfulness. And you can do a keyword search for 10 paramitas. You'll read the same thing. Um, equanimity. We'll go over them all in just a moment. Uh, loving kindness. Hmm. Uh, determination. Renunciation. We slow down around 70. You get to like 70, 80%, like a C or B, and it's just like, these are the probably ones I need the most. Let's go through each of these eight, and if they pop up, I'll write them down. If not, I'll look on that sheet and write it written down. Patience. Um, that one doesn't need a lot of explanation, I think. I think we understand what that is. Practice it. You know, you watch yourself getting agitated and irritable, and you say, you know what? I'm just going to see what happens. Breathing. Dropping my shoulders. Letting someone in front of me be patient. Wisdom energy comes through trial and error, experience. You keep practicing again and again and again, and you cultivate wisdom. Same thing in your practices. You keep needling and needling and needling. Pulse diagnosis, pulse diagnosis, tongue diagnosis, herbal formula writing. Hi, Mrs. Jones, come sit down. How are you feeling today? Hey, I'm just checking in on you. How, what's going on? You know, I just want to see how you're feeling. You practice this week after week, months, years after years, and you get better at it, you get more efficient. You know? And ultimately, I think you know, the point of our practice is to be kind, you know, to offer support to your patients. You'll see, one of the best tips, especially for you two getting out soon, um, I don't know, where are you guys in your practices, or in, in studies here? I'm, I'm in my fourth quarter. Fourth quarter? Uh, fifth school. Okay, got it. Okay, so a little motley, a few different things. If you can practice authentically caring for your patients, you know, and or 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 have inspiring people in your life that can teach that value to you, you know, it makes me think of one of my teachers. Her name is Amachi. She's, you know, a, a woman from South India. And she's sometimes referred to as like the hugging saint. She does a lot of philanthropic um, things, you know, in terms of building hospitals and schools for, you know, people in need. And she comes, uh, travel with, with her in India, and I've been following her for over 20 years. 
and every year she comes to LA in June and I go see her and there's thousands of people there and everybody and there's you know music and there's meditation and there's Dharma talks and, and then you get your hug and there's a hug and she hugs I don't know here three five thousand people a night I mean but in India I mean it might be 25 30 to 25,000 people a day and she'll sit there and just takes them in each one she's pregnant not pregnant with, present with each one she's so proud you can just feel it so when I say oh I had 10 patients 12 patients today oh, I'm tired me, 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 you know then I think of something like that who sees three to five thousand you know then you also you're like you know what it ain't so bad this is pretty darn great you know um, and you start to practice being in that. I can see when she sees people, she just wants to love them and care for them like a, a parent and help them heal. And a lot of people, they don't feel that support or love either with a family member or with their spouse or with their work. They don't feel support. So if you get good at opening your heart, patience, some of these other qualities, to really uh, love your patients and support them, you know, you'll have a wonderful practice. And you'll feel very fulfilled as a, a caregiver. And they'll sniff it out. If you're not in that vibe and you're run down and you're burnt out, the patients say, oh, okay, I don't want to bother you. And they won't. And your practice will get smaller. So practice being around people that are inspiring to you. Thich Nhat Hanh, Amitshi, I'm sure other people in your life. Some people say, my dog. My dog unconditionally loves me all the time, and it's really inspiring to me. Great. Some people say, not even a person, it's a candle. I just think on a, a candle, an image of light inspires me. So over time, we keep practicing things, and we get better at it. You know, keep practicing being in your heart, wisdom, energy energy you do some type of exercise that helps cultivate brings energy inside you know you as opposed to I'm talking and all this information is going out you know, I should do some type of qigong practice or meditation practice where I can feel my energy coming back to the core my mind is becoming more still there's not fractious thoughts all around me you're doing energy cultivating exercise some people it's gardening some people it's playing the piano some people it's meditation practice, some people get that runner high, their mind gets very still. So you do things that cultivate your energy. Truthfulness, obviously a tough one. I'll never forget, I had a patient who came in, nicest woman, and one day she said, you know, I cheated on my partner, should I tell my partner? I said, that's a tricky question, that's, this is, that's your dharma, this is your choice, this is your life. Well, why would you, why would you not? Why wouldn't, because he might, he might leave me. Well, I can also see the opportunity of great growth. You know, something perhaps was unfulfilling for you. Where do you want to go with it? And she didn't tell him. I remember I kept working on her for months and months. It was eating her up. This energy started to just go crazy in the mind. And she didn't get a chance to practice this energy. It would have been better had she just told him and let the cards lay where they fall where they lay, or whatever, whatever saying is, and work through it. But it's not, but it's her process. We'd all say, tell the truth. But it's her process to actually do it. Equanimity. We all have ups and downs. You know, that's normal. But Thich Nhat, uh, uh, Ram Das, who's an uh, American meditation teacher, he says you need to still the surface of the water. Choppy water, no good. Still the surface through equanimity so that you can plumb the depths of the moment. How can you be present if I'm so really excited? That's not fair because how you want to grasp for that, but you, then you want to push away being really upset about something? That's not fair. Equanimity, you even keel. It doesn't mean say, oh, I have no joys in life. Actually, all should be like a level of bliss. Equanimity practice. Loving kindness. We'll do meditation practice on these. That's the energy of very kind, easy to be loving to people who are very kind to you. you know, they've always been good to you, and you love them for that. A little more tricky to be offered loving kindness, that same type of love, to someone you don't even know, a stranger that passes you on the street. Even more tricky is to offer that 
to someone who's been unkind to you, who's giving you trouble. It's not about them. It's about your inner landscape. And there are meditation practices we'll try. There's a walking practice we'll do on cultivating loving kindness. I don't want to say too much about it, but we'll get to it. Determination. Also, people say, that's like desire. That sounds so similar to desire. It's not. It's more like tapping into your purpose. You know, if you're going through school here and your purpose is to get through here and be a caregiver, because some time ago you signed some psychic contract, I don't know, many lifetimes ago, that I'm going to keep coming back as a caregiver. That's my thing. And this time maybe an acupuncturist. Next time maybe a, a car mechanic. Next time after that maybe a doctor. Next time after that maybe, you know, um, uh, a gardener. Just because you're a medical provider doesn't mean you're a caregiver, and vice versa. Just because you're a gardener doesn't mean you're not a caregiver. Gardener, yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure you've met many doctors that you're like, when you're really wondering what their motivation is, you vice versa. You met people, you know, that help bag your groceries that have just like such a peaceful spirit, a very healing spirit. So if your mission, if you're mission, you're determined to get through this school here to become a caregiver, you know, administering acupuncture points in herbal medicine or something else related to Chinese medicine, then you need to have that connection that this is in the right spirit for you. Renunciation. This doesn't necessarily mean you need to renounce your family or renounce sex, okay? That's uh, not necessarily what I'm getting at. There are sometimes there's patterns that we have within ourselves that don't work for us. They don't open our heart. They, they get this going. They keep us unhealthy. You'll see this with your patients. A lot of the work you're doing is trying to make relationships with your patients to, let me just turn the, you know, steer the ship a little different. Once we, I mean, it's a lot of work in the beginning because I got to steer this thing out of its current course. And then once it, you know, it's changed course, then you just let it go and then it starts doing some really good stuff. You know, health gets a lot better. But you got to make that relationship with your patients, you know, to get that trust, which means you really have to care. And if it's the right time and the right space, then you can help steer them, and they'll, they'll, they'll do better. And our medicine is wonderfully equipped as a holistic modality to, be, to serve in that realm. If you were an ER doc treating a gunshot wound, it's not really your place. Your place is to take out the bullet, Make sure the patient doesn't pass away. You don't have to necessarily, you know, steer their life in a new direction. You know, they may not, they may not, they, they may not take any responsibility of what's going on. You're just, just help me out, doc. Just take it out. That's not holistic medicine. Holistic medicine, acupuncture, is about helping guide people to a better, you know, direction in their own life. And you'll see this. You'll help them renounce things in their lives. You'll see this. You'll see. With allergies, I've seen this. I have migraines, I've seen this. Gosh, I have gastrointestinal issues, all kinds of issues. We help work with them, and at some point they say, I get it. Some, this is not serving me. And they let go. And all of a sudden their allergy stops. And all of a sudden their GERD goes away. Yeah, and your herbal medicine was great, and your acupuncture was great, but it was the combination of the work that you do with this person that helps them let go of something that wasn't serving them. That's a hard opening exercise. And we do this in ourselves. For all that time, can I remember 9 and 10? No. <laughs> Sorry. Still got to work on some more. Oh, morality. That's a wonderful one. Of course. So some, one, uh, a heart-opening exercise may, may be you're doing certain things that are not necessarily for your betterment, for your own advancement, but are for the greater good. You make choices based on what would serve the community more. That's a heart opening exercise for yourself. You become a little selfless, you know? And that concept of being selfless and doing things for others is a heart opening exercise. Oh, I got to work on this one too, guys. Generosity. Ah, oh. you give. 
either your time, your money, or whatever it is in your life, you practice giving. Once in my life, there was this you know, energy of, my parents would do this, if we got, say, gifts, to learn this energy, say you got money as a gift, and say they give you $30, or $3, or whatever it was. You spend a third, you save a third, and you give a third away. You donate. And that's the practice. That's your gift. So go blow 10 bucks, you know, whatever. Go put 10 away to learn the value of just like saving money, and go practice the art of generosity. Give it away to something that someone who needs it, and feel what comes back from that. These are all things to open your heart. So I want to just do a little meditation on this, and then we'll go to one break, okay? Any questions on that? So far, so good? Okay. So don't worry too much about the posture, or am I doing this correctly today? Just find a comfortable seated posture. I know we've been sitting for a long time, so we won't be too long. Relax your body. Find your way to your breath. Slowly inhale, slowly exhale. And don't worry about any sounds around you, cars, voices. Just let it all go. Practice coming back to your breath. Slowly inhale, slowly exhale. Try to allow your spine to be nice and straight. And shoulders to roll back. We'll do a little breathing first. So what we'll do, it looks like a triangle. We'll inhale for a count of four. That's one edge. Then we'll hold for a count of seven. And then we'll exhale for a count of eight. So when you're ready, slowly let the air out. Slowly inhale for a count of four. Hold for seven. Exhale for eight. Great, that's one. So we'll try it again. Again, we'll inhale for four, hold for seven, exhale for eight. And you can exhale out this time if you like through your mouth. So inhale and exhale. Inhale for four. Hold for seven. Exhale eight. Again, inhale four. Hold seven. Exhale, eight. One last.
last time. Inhale, four. Hold seven. Exhale, eight. Let's just remain peaceful and still, regular breathing, slowly inhaling, slowly exhaling. Feel your body relax, feel your jaw relaxed. And I'm going to read through each of the 10 paramitas again with that explanation. And if you can, feel each one coming into your heart and filling your heart. And then let go. And if you feel one is resonating more than another, then sit with that for a little bit, that one. And be in that space of that paramita, or the perfection of the heart. And breathe into it. Generosity. Morality. Renunciation. Wisdom. Energy. Patience. Truthfulness. Determination. Loving kindness.
equanimity. In just a few more moments, relax your face, relax your jaw, let go of any thoughts, find your way back to your breath. Just a few more breaths. And when you're ready, you can bring your hands to your heart, if you like. May all the good merits of this practice be offered to the liberation of all beings from suffering. May all beings live in happiness. And when you're ready, slowly allow yourself to come out of your practice and allow your eyes to open. Thoughts or comments before we go on break? I thought it was interesting when I was meditating, I didn't realize my legs were tired, so right when I opened my legs, I realized, oh, I'm a little tired. Mm -hmm. And we'll, we'll find a way. And you guys, some of you still have shoes on. Well, you're welcome to wear shoes if you like. I usually take my shoes off just because. Yeah. Relaxing, but you may find even with your posture, your legs, may, this leg may fall asleep like this, and then you just do it again and again and again, and it still does. So you decide, you know what, I'm gonna go like that, and then it never falls asleep again. It just you, you have to you just have to figure out our own best posture. You know, some people practice on the side like this, like a Japanese style. They'll sit on a bench and they put their legs underneath. You know, This, it's very good. Others may practice, you know, like this. So others may do half lotus or full lotus. Some people may put their hands like this or like this. These are different mudras or just like this. We'll go over mudras another day. There's different hand gestures. Um, whatever works best for you. 
And, I, and, and try many. See, but I, spine nice and straight is, is, is good. I had a meditation teacher who said, you know, once, it's like a radio. You know, if your antenna is a little cockeyed, you may not get the best reception. But if it can be straight and long, then you might be able to hear what the universe is. Some of the answers to some of your questions. Anyways, why don't we go on break? Let's come back at quarter after. Any other, anything else before we go on break? Okay, let's uh, let's shoot for quarter after. We'll start up again. Okay. <laughs>